Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you are new here, hi, my name is Steph. In today's video, I just wanted to go through a quick run through of my thoughts and opinions on Best Day Ever by Kyra Ruder. I hope that I am pronouncing that right. I purchased this book, it came out for $12 when it was released, I think sometime early September, late August. And it was just sitting on my shelf all happily until last night when I decided to finally get around to reading it. Like all of my other review videos, I'm going to split this up into a non-spoilery and a spoilery review so that way there's a little something for everyone. Just so that way if there is anyone who wants an overview about the book as opposed to people who want a more in-depth analysis and want to hear people's thoughts and opinions without anyone being in danger of having the book spoiled for them. I want to say at the start of this video, I'm going to give a trigger warning. There is a fair amount of violence and abuse that takes place in this book and it is definitely not subtle. So if that makes you uncomfortable, please do not pick this book up and click off this video now. Firstly, how beautiful is that cover? I must admit that, that is what drew me into the book originally. It's so silky and so soft and it just, it pops. It was definitely, I'm not gonna lie, a cover buy. I love psychological thrillers and domestic suspense stories. And I have not enjoyed one as much since Gone Girl. It's the first book that I ever read from the bad guy's perspective. And I understand that there are a ton of books out there. There's you. But there, are, I know that there are tons of books out there that aren't just psychological thrillers or thriller stories that have like the bad guy perspective. But it was the first one that I've ever read like that. There was a ton of character build up in the first few chapters and I found that very engrossing. From the get go, they just started to unravel and tell us their stories. You could pick up on the subtle hints of how they were feeling and what ways you thought the characters were going to go with their choices. It just got more suspenseful and more violent and more psychological with each passing chapter. This story follows a married couple, Paul and Mia, who have two primary school children. Paul is very money driven and materialistic and almost a social climber. And Mia is a lot more down to earth, even though she has grown up with money. She's immediately painted by Paul's brush as this perfect, breakable and influ like what's the word I'm looking for? She she's able to be influenced and he can she's very very malleable and he can turn her and her opinions and her decisions around and control her. Even though he seems to think that he is and he's actually said like he's actually said it that he's more clever than her when I 100% believe it's the other way around. So Paul has planned this romantic getaway for the two of them, taking them away from their routine suburban boring lives. He's taking to their lake house that they have just had refurbished and filled with beautiful brand new antique furniture and artwork. The kids are going to stay at home with their babysitter. He's made a playlist for the journey, made a reservation at some brand new exclusive restaurant for dinner. What more could he possibly do to show his wife that he loves her or to make her happy? What more could she possibly want from him? From before they have even set off on their trip, things start to unravel and this slowly starts breaking their facades down. I really liked and loved how we were given small pieces of the bigger puzzle as opposed to some books and especially psychological thrillers or suspense novels where everything is just wrapped up into a nice little bow in the last 50 pages or so. We were really able to have time to think about what was going on and to make our own assumptions and the way we thought the story was going to turn out. I ended up giving this book 4 out of 5 stars. I really, really like this book and I'm so glad that I purchased it. So without further ado, that brings me to the spoilery section of this video. So please click off if you haven't read the book yet, if you don't want to be spoiled. You are more than welcome to come back once you have read it and join in the discussion in the comments down below. So thank you very much. Bye bye for now. For everyone else that is still here, onto the nitty gritty. I asked myself so many questions as I was reading this. Is he going to kill her? Is she going to kill him? Is there someone else that's going to play a bigger part in this and change the direction of the novel? Has he plotted her murder? Before they've even left, he's immediately lying. He gets a phone call from a headhunter, but he plays it off saying that it is someone from the office, that it's a phone call from the office. He cuts their conversation short when she brings up wanting another child, a daughter, because they already have two sons and she really, really wants a, a daughter. But he brushes it off because she can't handle any more kids and he's doing her a favour and this is really putting him out instead of her and she should be grateful to him. He is very misogynistic and very into gender roles. Mia should be the only one concerned with 
preparing meals. There's one part in the book where they're talking to their next, like their next door neighbor to the lake house, Buck, and he's talking about how he's an avid gardener and he has a green thumb and he really enjoys gardening just like me. And Paul just dismisses that as Buck being weak and old. Me can't work, she's not allowed to work. Her job in life, her role in life, the only thing she should ever think about doing is keeping the house clean, cooking, and looking after their two kids. When Mia tells Paul that she was offered a job at a startup agency by his former mentor, he feels, he immediately feels challenged and feels that she's becoming too bold and that he needs to squash this idea like a cockroach, his words, not mine. And that this guy's somehow trying to worm his way into Mia's head and trying to turn me against her husband, Paul. And this whole time she was fat shaming him not that I'm saying that that is okay in any form whatsoever, but in terms of the story, it was the one thing that his only weakness, and she was pointedly telling him repeatedly that he should be making changes to his diet, that he should be cutting out dairy and processed meats, and she was, glad, you know, giving him pointed stares when he ordered the pizza. And that, that just, not that, again, I'm not happy about the fat shaming aspect, but it being his only weakness, I was so, I was applauding her for standing up for herself. But the other part of me was like, girl, don't be doing that. Pushing him too far, getting him too worked up is not in your best interests. The way he described physically abusing his ex-wife before Mia was absolutely disturbing. And so was the way he was describing just light, wanting to light matches and throw them at Mia and Buck in the lounge room when they were having drinks. He felt that the fact that he was having extramarital affairs was excusable and even helpful in psychosis, that it didn't harm anyone and it made the world a better place. But if Mia even looked at another guy or had a conversation with another guy, that was unacceptable because she's a possession and she shouldn't leave the house. He selects and curates these women throughout the story, like throughout his life, whether it be pre-Mia, during Mia, post-Mia. He doesn't want them to be able to think. He doesn't want them to be able to think for themselves, act for themselves, fend for themselves. He controls every aspect of their lives and they just need to accept that and just get on with their merry way. I was begging that Mia was lying about the boys being at the movies. I was hoping that she knew exactly what was going on and that somehow, some way, she was smuggling those boys out of this whole situation to get them away from Paul and his influence. When Mia brought up the fact that Mr. White Collar didn't have a job after everything and how he disrespected everyone, that, that guy at the store and in the car park and the wait staff and everyone that they had come across to that point. I was amazed and I cheated on. I actually woke up my cat because they were quite upset with me. And I cheered so much harder when it was confirmed that Mia actually was able to smuggle to get the kids out of there and get them out of the house before he or she came back home. I was so happy for her that she was able to break free of his clutches and evil influence. But I just thought she was so silly for not just running to, not picking up and running off to New York when she had a chance before Paul came back. And so why do you stay there? Girl, go somewhere where he can't find you. Why did she feel the need to go back to the lake house after all this had happened? Like, whether you want to keep it or not, just leave. When Paul had no idea that the furniture, the art, the sculptures, all the antiquities that they had were when he came back to get the boys, he was such an idiot. He thought that they were like moving to a new house and that everything that had ha like transpired in the last few hours was just one big ruse and one big joke. And it was some massive surprise and that they were moving to this new house and that everything was gonna be okay. It was all surprise. And the fact that Mia had outsmarted him and had her own plan made me really, really happy for her. And I was just so proud of her in that moment. The way that whether she and Buck and they had organized to speak to all of these women, hear their side of the story, broke through all of his evil little schemes and turned them all against him, especially Gretchen. Thank God she saved Gretchen though, like retrospectively, the whole thing that she was a mistress and she knew about the family and she knew about, he had a wife and he had kids and she still went along with it. That is absolutely disgusting. But the fact that they were still able to go through and warn her so that way she herself wouldn't be hurt or roped into any of this nonsense. That was a very big of them. So like I said, I ended up giving the book four stars and I know that Paul was dangerous enough that Mia needed someone there to stick up for her, to make sure that she was thinking clearly and to keep 
keep her on her path so that way he wouldn't influence her way of thinking after 10 years of them being together and have someone to help her work through things but I just wish that she had come to these conclusions by herself that she didn't need Buck or any other outside influence to tell her hey this is going on you're being poisoned and oh you need to read these books and read about the law I wish that she had a bit more of a part to play in taking Paul down I don't think that the author gave me much of a voice except for she just gave us a few pages at the end of the novel almost a chapter outlining Mia's story her thought processes and I wish that we had that we got to see some of the events and stories and the history like their past history together through her own eyes because I feel like that would have given us a bit more of a broader perspective of the victim suspense it wasn't just us getting worried about what was happening to Paul but also becoming a bit more invested in Mia's life so that is it everyone thank you so much for watching let me know what your thoughts on this book are if you have read it down below I really really appreciate you guys watching thank you all so much always for your support if there is any particular book that you want me to read review anything like that please be sure to let me know I have no idea when I'm actually going to post this video um, I know it'll be within the next two or so weeks but thank you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.